It was day two of the Seven Days Battles. General Longstreet's men were overpowering the Union Army. The sheer number of Confederates amassing at the Battle of Gaines Mill was devastating. On the front lines was Colonel John McLean. He was an Erie native, a born leader, and yearned for the battlefield. He organized a preliminary version of the National Guard, fought in the Mexican War as a captain, and became the sheriff of Erie County. McLean was also a skilled recruiter. He formed a pre-war militia called the Wayne Guard, the 90-Day Erie Regiment, and finally the 83rd Pennsylvania Regiment, of which he would become colonel. These troops would go on to fight in nearly every major battle on the Eastern Front. At the Battle of Gaines Mill, McLean was shot in the chest and died instantly. Nearly half of the 83rd Regiment's men were killed, wounded, or taken prisoner here. The demoralizing battle not only marked a decisive Confederate victory, but also became one of the bloodiest in Civil War history, with casualties exceeding 15,000 men. Though many of our heroes perished like McLean, many lived to tell the tale of battle and beyond, from Fredericksburg to Spotsylvania and all the way to the Weldon Railroad. James R. Jordan of 145th Pennsylvania Regiment fought through three years of gruesome battles. At Reams Station, while trying to cut off Robert E. Lee's supply lines, Jordan suffered two severe gunshot wounds. One bullet pierced through his right cheek, while a shell fragment lodged in his thigh. He was then captured and sent to Salisbury Prison Camp. When taken prisoner, he wrote, I weighed 140 pounds, and after I came out, I weighed 90. The conditions of Civil War prisons were hellish. There was an extreme shortage of food, overcrowding, and meager sanitation. The dire condition of these prison camps proliferated disease, starvation, and death. Unfortunately, Jordan wasn't the only family member to be captured. His stepson, John Henry, of the 111th Pennsylvania Regiment, was wounded and apprehended at the Battle of Peachtree Creek in Georgia and sent to Andersonville Prison. Nearly 30% of the soldiers sent here perished behind its walls. There were countless other soldiers who embodied the common man. They sought to do right by their country, but many never made it home. One such man was Private Lewis R. Sherrod. He was a short, blue-eyed, blonde-haired Edinburgh native with a light complexion. He dutifully wrote home to his mother, apprising her on the trials of battle and sending home portions of his pay to support the family. The mail goes out in five minutes, so I can't write much. I am well. We have been having some hard times, but I never felt better. We'll write as often as I can. The tragedy of this letter is that Sherrod was a prolific writer, and had he more time, likely would have said so much more. Three days later, Sherrod was shot in the head and killed in the trenches of Petersburg, Virginia. It was only one month prior that he had written, Goodbye, Mother. Don't worry about me. I will come out all right. Some of Erie's men stand out as heroes, and others came to pass with only their families to recognize their sacrifice. While each man should be remembered as an individual, it is important to keep in mind that Erie County came together as a collective body, as a family. These men trudged through brutal conditions, watched canister tear jagged holes through their comrades, endured the despair of prison, and too often sacrificed their lives. The catastrophe of this war shows us their sacrifice, valor, and grit. But what's more is that it demonstrates what can be accomplished when we come together as a city, as a county, and as a country.